Alright STEM8, I just wanted to make a quick video that's going to take us through all the different buttons that we're going to need to use in case you need something to come back to and watch real quick because you forgot how to do something. First off, important things that everybody needs, communication mode on USB only, platform type set to natural language, and if all your stuff's plugged in and it's not working, use the download firmware button up here. Otherwise, in the robot download firmware, we can click on these two buttons. If that doesn't work, um, just kidding, you don't need the joystick. Um, but the CPU or the master CPU firmware, sometimes these need to be downloaded. Other things we can do if we have problems is just save our stuff, close robot C, open it back up again, turn the cortex off, unplug the battery, unplug the orange cord plug everything, the orange cord and battery back in, open up Robot C, and sometimes just resetting Robot C like that is what we need. Under movement, we've got start motor, we also have stop motor. This is what turns the motors on and off. Remember full speed is 120, 90 is 3 quarters, 60 is half, 30 is 1 quarter, and negative sign in front of any number is going to make it reverse. So that's what you can put in for your speeds. Okay. Under wait, we've got a wait command, which is what we use for any time we have to wait for a certain amount of time. Now the first command we'll probably use is until bump. You could also use until touch, but this, remember we talked about that this is only when it's being touched and if you hold it down the computer can run thousands of lines of code so I would recommend this one for most circumstances. Under special we've got where we can turn the LED off and turn the LED back on which brings us to our until commands. For the potentiometer we have until potentiometer greater than and until potentiometer less than. And for the line tracker we have until dark and until uh, where's light. Dark is not ha is not hand covering. Remember we talked about until light is when you cover it with your hand because the sensor and the infrared emitter LED are on the same side and so it's emitting light and your hand is covering it which is reflecting all of it back so until dark is not when your hand is covering it keep that in mind that's really important and that's the biggest thing a lot of people get wrong notice how the, oh also for the threshold you're going to need to take the minimum and maximum values the minimum and maximum values or the covered and uncovered you add them up and divide by two so <clears throat> while you're waiting you can you know put in my favorite number 007 okay and use that because you need to have a number to download it to your robot. Once it's downloaded to your robot, you can use the robot debugger windows, which I can't get into right now, and you would click on sensors, which down here, time to wake up. All right, sorry about that. So, You've got the until dark and until light. We put a random number in for the threshold to download it the first time. Open up the sensor values, which would come from the robot debugger windows and sensors, and we'd be able to see what our potentiometer, excuse me, our line tracker is at. We'd take the covered and uncovered values and divide them by two. So the start and stop motor and wait command are used throughout until bump. We can use for the limit. can be used for the limit 
or the touch until touch is only when pressed. We've got LEDs on and off for turning them on and off. Potentiometer greater than or less than. Make sure you put the greater than in for greater than. That's pretty important, otherwise your program's not gonna run the right way. Um, so that brings us to while loops. While loops are under the control structures and natural language, excuse me, control structures, control structures, while condition body. Your body all your code is going to go inside of these two braces here. Okay? And you notice how this gets indented in extra line. Your condition is going to be something that is always true like 1 is equal to 1. And then if you have something like you're going to wait until, you can either put it at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. So it'll run through it once and wait, or if you put it at the beginning and it's not true, it'll wait right at the beginning. So it depends on how you want your program to work, but the until needs to be inside of the while loop. So if you have until potentiometer, then that needs to be inside the while loop. Don't forget about googling vex video trainer which I'll do right now and show you. you go to vex video trainer we've got this website sometimes there's a link that pops up asking you to put in email stuff you would just hit the return button and click on it again and then that'll go away when you get into the website we're going to click on the fundamentals tab here and scroll down to the programming and reference documents so fundamentals tab scroll down programming reference documents here we have the while loops and if else statements you will need these to take a look and read through them to have a better understanding of how the while loop works I love these because it breaks down into three simple parts the while loops as well as the if else statements. The if else statement is actually on the second page, but notice how the if else statement in the example inside of a while loop that is an infinite while loop. Make sure you have this in yours, otherwise it'll just check the if statement, the else statement when you hit start, and then it'll end your program right away. We want it to be inside a while loop, so it keeps checking the if statement and the else statement. So while well, conditioned body. And then we have, I'll bring in another while loop and the body, add some returns, and inside of that I will put the if statement. Under if statements you want if condition body else body. And you can drag that in here. Now the condition part, we'll kind of bring this together a little bit more. Don't forget, don't delete this this ends your program. That last one's pretty important. The condition I, for the while loop is going to always be true. And the condition for your if statement I believe is a sensor value. It's asking like if a sensor value is pressed. So to do that you can see down here we have sensors and variables. The sensor value would be whatever your thing is called. And then if it's pressed, equal to 1. Otherwise, you could do things like greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and not equal to. So there's lots of different ways to do it. We won't get into all of them, but the basic one is 1 for pressed. Zero. when talking about switches. So this sensor value equals equals one would all go inside of where the condition is. If sensor value name of switch whatever equals equals one would go inside of the condition. This is all the condition.
one for pressed and zero for not pressed. So that's the video. Last thing is the motor sensor setup. Motors, left motor, 393 motor. Notice the tabs across the top. The analog tab, we've got PO10 for the potentiometer, line for the line follower. Digital sensors, green, limit, and bump. For the green LED, the limit and bump are both touch sensors. So that's the motor sensor setup. And hopefully between that and this, you should be able to have a pretty good understanding of how all of the parts work. It was a little bit longer video than I wanted, but a lot of great information inside of it. Hopefully you can find some of it useful.